What's going on everyone? Welcome back to some more Michael Zilla. Now, I've not seen many people do this, so I thought I would give it a shot. We are going to embark on a sort of series of reading the Godzilla King of the Monsters official novelization. Now, the novelization is quite a bit different from the actual film, so that's why I thought I'd read it. So, I think we will read the prologue and chapter one in this video. <coughs> but I will think considering oh if we reach four hundred subscribers I'll read it. But I don't know, I feel like doing it so now would be better. <coughs> anyway if you can get your novelization <laughs> Because we're reading Godzilla King of the Monsters novelization by Greg Keyes, based upon the screenplay by Mike Doherty and Zach Shields, and also based on the characters Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan. Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan, owned and created by Toho Co. <coughs> We'll get there eventually. Prologue. The Depths. He woke, and he prowled his territory. He was in no hurry. He wasn't hungry, only smelling. Seeing, listening. The depths were not silent. The deepest sound was time. The steady, slow grind of the earth. The slipping of stone and stone. He heard this not with his ears, but through his bones. It was loudest in the hot places where he fed and rested, but it was everywhere the background against which all other sounds existed. Sometimes it grew sharper when the earth cracked and the heat came out, bearing sustenance. Quicker were the songs of the tides, which were nowhere the same. He knew each contour of the continents by the sound of the tides, moving in and out like breath. Even in deep ocean, no two trenches or sea mounts sounded the same as the surface swelled and sank above them. Smaller and swifter still, the clicks, the low and high calls of the great swimmers, the high-pitched pipping of the small ones, the grunts, the whistles and chirps of life. The sea was never silent, but it had, but it had been quieter before a strange sound invaded the ocean, the churning and banging and screeching of unliving things that felt the smell of oil went behind them. The great swimmers could no longer hear each other well. <coughs> Sometimes they lost their way, could not find each other. Over the ages, the sounds of the sea had changed, but never so much, and never so quickly. Now there was a new song, it pulsed through the deeps, faint but un unmistakable. The voice of something in his territory that should not be there. Chapter 1 As usual, Emma woke, up, woke before the alarm sounded. Her restless mind rarely allowed the, her the benefit of a full night's sleep, and today was shaping up to be an exciting one. She put in a long night, but it had been worth it. She stayed in bed a few more minutes, going over her plans for the day. She rose, showered, brushed her teeth, combed out her long auburn hair, dressed. She turned on the telephone room, flipped through a few channels, but didn't hear anything. She didn't, know, didn't hear anything she didn't already know. She paused, however, when she came to the BWN. It showed a Senate hearing. Sarazawa and Graham were there. Looking beleggered. I said that wrong. I can tell I said that wrong. She remembered a, a similar inquiry five years ago with her in the hot seat. She didn't envy the two scientists. Top brass at the, seri at the mysterious monarch organisation will face an intense grilling as the government continues to push for the exterminations of the Titan, uh, of Titans, the anchor was saying, and rumours persist that Monarch may be hiding even more creatures discovered since the attacks of 2014. 
A historic tragedy that changed the world as we know it forever. The day that the world discovered that monsters are real. Some people had had known there were monsters in the world for many years, generations, but mostly that the monsters slept or lurking, lurked in remote corners of the planet. They kept to themselves. They were watched and in some cases contained by monarch. But five years ago, when a monster broke free from containment in Japan and charted a path of destruction from Japan, through Honolulu and finally San Francisco, the fact that monsters were real became very public knowledge. <coughs> The world learned of Godzilla. Thousands died in a few days. Once great cities lay in ruins. When it was over two meters, many massive unidentified terrestrial organisms lay dead, killed by Godzilla. And when the fight was over, the wounded Godzilla dragged himself into the ocean and vanished. A few months later, he reappeared to fight another mutant, this time in more remote places with less damage and fewer collateral deaths. Then he once more returned to the deeps. For five years, humanity had lived in fear of another attack. The housing market crashed as the value of waterfront property plummeted. School children drilled to evacuate in case of a monster attack. As the monster's existence came to light, so did Monarch. Scientists from the organisation were called before various government bodies and questioned at length about their intentions and methods. In the years since the attacks, intelligence agencies and investigative reporters had come to believe that Godzilla and the Mutos were the weren't the only monsters out there, that there might be more, many more. Emma turned her gaze from the screen down to a hard plastic, case, a hard black pl plastic case on the floor. It's going to work, she thought. I know it will. But if she was sure, why was she so nervous? She turned the TV off and heard a piercing noise from the next room. Maddie, she said. Madison pushed some of the school books on the kitchen table aside to make room for it. room for her sticker plastered laptop. Putting the earbuds and scrolled through emails, email as the pixie's wave of mutilation began hammering at her eardrums. <clears throat> as usual, more than half the emails were from Dad. That wasn't even that surprising. She didn't have any friends uh, and even less family outside of Mum and Dad. Neither did Dad, at least not anymore. Which probably explained why he wrote her at least once a day, and often more, despite the fact that it had been a long time since she'd answered him. She hadn't even opened most of the recent ones. She wasn't entirely sure why. There was Mum, of course, and what she would think. And she had her own misgivings, but she, he was so persistent, and she did miss him. A lot. She had a clearer picture of him in her mind, sending the mail, checking for a response and finding nothing. A look of disappointment on his face. Mum might not understand, but Maddie was sure he was different now. Maybe not all the way back to his old self, but way, way, but better. Way better. She had a sort of breath and clicked on the most recent mail. Hey Madison, it read. Haven't heard from you guys in a few months. Hope you're having fun. Here are a few pics of the walls I've been studying. Weren't they cute? Of course, she loved the walls. He knew that. Like everything wild and pure, they appealed to her in a way so deep and strong that she couldn't explain it out loud. And the pups were really cute, but she was also a little jealous of them. Dad was always out in the wilderness, in Colorado, with the wolves. And although she f knew it was more complicated than that, it still le left a hollow in her gut that boiled down to this. Why could he be there for the wolves, but not for her? But of course, when he was around, the tug of war always started again, with her as a rope. Among the pictures was one selfie. Dad had a little more grey in his brown hair than when he, than when she had last seen him. He was attempting to look silly and doing a pretty good job of it. It had made a, it made a think of better times. The games they played together. He was trying to reconnect with her, so maybe she should try too. She hit reply and placed her fingers on the keyboard, thinking about how to start. Sorry, maybe just a basic. <clears throat> 
Sorry I haven't written back shit. She, written back she, uh, she began. I miss you, but there's something I want to talk to you about. Again, she paused, glancing nervously at her mother's room. How much could should she tell him? Nothing. If mum had anything to say about it. Hi, doggy. Nothing. If mum had anything to say about it. Dad wasn't supposed to be involved in any of this anymore. But it was so big. What was happening? So important. He shouldn't be completely out of the loop. I'm getting worried about mum. She began. And the smart detector started its shrill beeping. <coughs> what do you want? 